Hi there, this is Jacob Nash, and I'm now going to start a new series of videos for calculus. I said that I was going to do this kind of a long time ago. Finally, I'm able to. Uh, I was actually originally planning on doing this in 2022, so sorry that it took that long for me to do that. Another thing is that you may have seen that I had a video not too long ago, like a few days ago, that I was thinking about ending the channel, but ultimately I feel like that, yes, it's true, I'm going to have to say the disclaimer for these videos as usual, but I feel like based on the feedback from some people, it does, it does, um, this channel has helped some people. So I'll, I'll still make videos, but anyone that's a new viewer um, or hasn't heard me say this before, please remember that I'm not a certified teacher. I've said that so many times, but um, maybe I didn't make it clear enough, but I just make these videos to try to help people based on what I know. And occasionally, yes, I do have errors and, and or the way that I explain it might not make sense to some people. But this is, I think, doing more help than harm. So I guess I will just keep doing this. So yeah, please keep that in mind about these uh, calculus videos, but I will try my best. So first of all, let me talk about what math videos I've made so far. So the first uh, video that I made was in January 2020. And so I made some geometry videos, some algebra and pre-calculus. The pre-calculus videos I finished in I think December 2021. So I was planning on starting the calculus ones not long after that, but I've had a lot of holdups and things. So yeah, here we are, May 2024, and now I'm doing it. But the important thing for this course is that if some things are a little bit foggy on your mind, you want to make sure you remember some things. You can always go back and watch the other videos that I've made for pre-calculus and algebra. They aren't on this channel, but it's a separate channel because I, for some reason, used to make a different channel for every subject, but I stopped doing that. Um, but you can see that on my homepage. You can click on any of the channels if you want to refresh anything. I should have a video on virtually any topic you would need. But still, on this channel, I will have some prerequisite videos of things that you will want to know and will be assumed that you know. For this course. Um, and not all calculus courses will be the same, just like anything that I've done. So you might not have the exact same layout is what I'll do. But the first thing that's important to know is what is a function? And you know, oh, you might be about to bang your head on the desk. Back to this again. Well, it's not that hard if you remember. But there are some different things that you will need to make sure that you know for calculus. Typically, calculus may be a course you would take in college, not necessarily high school, but you could take it in high school. But here in calculus, we're going to need to be a lot more careful about how we notate things. That's the first thing I want to say. Um, and one of the first things for that is when we're talking about a function, we need to label it as f not f of x, because f of x is really a y value and it's not the function itself. So, you know, you get into all the very annoying specifics, but these are just, this is just the way that it is. You'll have to make sure you know that, that you're gonna wanna make sure if you're talking about a function, just say f, not f of x. There are two rules that are very simple. And of course, people can write them out in complicated ways, but this is really what they mean. And essentially they kind of are, could be considered one rule. But for every x, there must be a y. So there can't be no y's. And the other one is for an x, there can be one. So really, it's just saying there needs to be only one y for every x, not more, not less. But let's talk about the best way that I can uh, show you this is instead of showing you things that are functions, it's showing you things that are not. So the way that we can write functions 
is I'm going to do it a little bit different than what I've done before. And this video is not going to be what most of them will be like, because I'm on my computer, unfortunately, because I can't use the tablet, that the iPad that I used to use right now. Um, but that will change soon. So it's going to be a little bit slow for me to write this. So here's what we need to say. First, we'll do that, right? And then we need to, we'll just have an example here, okay? And I'll write it and then I'll explain what it means. Here, I'll just pause it. All right, here we go. Oh, what's this thing mean? It might look a little bit familiar to you, but not exactly like what you've seen. Okay, well, that's fine. Because we don't, like I said, it's a different a little bit than what you might usually know or what you know in the past. So what this is saying is this is actually our domain. And this is range. That makes sense if there's an arrow because it's saying well, that's the point. There's input, output. You have this for the X, out comes the Y. And it's saying this over here past the comma is saying what you need to do to it. If that wasn't there. It's like, oh, it's just the same. No, because this is saying you have to do one divided by it. And you might remember that function as we did call it. But like I said, really a function has to be F, notated as F. But you might remember that's the um, rational function. And I'm not going to get into the specifics of that right now. But it's a little bit of a funky one. And if you remember our asymptotes, asymptotes, holes, and things like that, ooh, hopefully that's stirring up some things to remember. But we'll just talk about why this is not a function. If you think about it, here's why. If it's not a function, there must be one situation that this is broken. There has to be a situation where either there's more than one y for an x or there's no y. And the first one is actually what it is that's listed here. There is a situation where there is no y for an x. f of x actually means y, if you remember. So if x is 0, that's a situation where we have no y because 1 divided by 0 is not a thing. And more specifically, undefined. That's really the word to use. I got to be careful about that. You know, the one you have to say this, the actual things. So undefined is the right word to say. And because you can't do one divided by zero. That's not what you can do. So that's why this is not a function. So that's the point of this crazy, dumb video of me saying this is so this is just making sure you know what this is not. And if it's not a function, in this case, we would actually call it a relation. Now, the next thing that we need to do is think of a situation. I'll think of one where instead the second rule will be broken. And that is something like this. I forgot to say, if you don't remember what this means, so I told you this was the domain and the range. The domain, hopefully you remember that means that's all the X values that there are. Range means that's all the Y values that there are. So looking at something like this, if we go from negative infinity to positive infinity, it means it includes all of the X values and this includes all of the Y values from negative infinity to positive infinity. Um, so that's why it's not a function because for something like this, that's not actually the domain and range that there are. This, so this is not, a, this is really like hypothetical because if you recall how we would actually put this, we'd have to take out the fact that zero isn't something that there is for the X. Um, now here, because remember this function actually, if you draw it, the it doesn't ever get to zero. That's the thing. So anyways, so go down here. Why is this not a function? Oh, what's this? Might have not learned about that. That's okay. But I'll explain what it is. So once again, our domain and range are all real numbers. Um, but make sure you write it like this, not just the R thing, you know. But what's this? What? What? Why is the f of x not on this uh, one side by itself? Well, no point in trying to convert it because this is actually a perfect format for you knowing how, what a circle could be. So if you ever see, this is actually means y. If you see x squared plus y squared equals something, then it should tell you this probably is a circle. 
And we actually know that the radius would be five. And right now I'm not gonna get into specifics of that, but you might guess because of the square root, but that's not, it, that's not the point of what I'm trying to say. But if you know that it's a circle, that's how you know that it's not a function. A circle is not a function because this rule is broken. For every X, there's only one Y. Well, here's, let me change the color. Here's an X value, okay? But there's two Y's here and here. It fails the vertical line test. That's a terrible vertical line, but that's what that VLT means. If it fails the vertical line test, meaning if you draw a vertical line and you go all the way through it, there should only ever be one Y value at a certain point. But here there's two, so that's not, no sir, it's not a function, it's also just a relation. So yes, I'm sorry this video was a little bit long, but that's something we need to make sure we remember, okay? So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.